As the legend goes, in 1823, in the town of Rugby, England, a fellow by the name of William Webb Ellis picked up a soccer ball, ran over the goalie, and the sport of rugby was born. Don't you hate it when truth gets in the way of a good story? The actual history is the private schools, what they call public schools in, uh, in England. Think of Harry Potter. You know, people go away, they're wealthy. They were concerned, the English were, that their wealthy elite would not be strong enough. So they invented a game. The idea was to make their kids tough. So here were these private, privileged kids just smashing each other silly. The idea was that they would be the people who run the empire from then on. So that's the truth of the whole story, though the William Webb Ellis story is a wonderful tale. Coach Alan Petty played rugby in the Marines and even won a collegiate national title at UC Berkeley. Everything about him says rugby, right down to the vehicle he drives. Play a high standard, clean heart, tough game, high standard, we'll have a great time. Captain? Since bringing rugby to Elsie Allen some 12 years ago, the Lobos have much to be proud of having won several league crowns, a state title, and have even competed in the national championship match. But ask Coach Petty what he is most proud of, and you'll get a different answer. Oh, absolutely, seeing them succeed after high school. You know, if you ask me how's the season going, it's really easy to say wins and losses, and it's really easy to look at the trophies on the wall. But the success of this is watching how many of them become, you know, good husbands and good fathers and things like that. How many of them get married, don't have divorces, how many of them get jobs and fulfill the commitments to their bosses or to their companies and things like that. Ones that start their own companies, people that finish law school, people that are in medical school, those things are much more rewarding. You know, if you ask me what's greater, winning a state championship or writing a letter of recommendation for David Thomerson to go to medical school, I'll tell you absolutely the medical school one. Like Cal, we are a meritocracy. If you show up and you work hard, you get rewarded. And if you uh, don't do what we tell you to do, what you're asked to do, you are uh, not able to do the things you want to do as far as playing time goes. I think the kids respect that, and I think that's why they like this so much. What looks to the untrained eye to be a mass of mangled madness is really well-orchestrated, organized chaos. Basic rule, you got 15, 15 fellows on a team. Uh, you can run forward, you pass back. When you get tackled, you gotta let go of the ball. So you're always passing back. Think of the option offense in football. Uh, it's much more aerobic than football because you're constantly running. While you have to be small to be a jockey, and it helps to be tall to play basketball, in rugby, if you have desire, there's a spot for everyone. You have a position called prop, it's generally the smart, the short, chubby fellows. You have a position called lock, that's always a tall, gangly kid. And then you got the kind of flanker, the kind of sociopathic types that go home and want to, you know, beat up on things. You put that, put a seven jersey on that fella. The clever kid, you put a ten jersey on, that's the smart guy, kind of the field general. The real fast kids are playing at the wings. So, you got a position for everybody. That's the neat thing about the game. Everybody can play. If you got heart, if you're tough, you can play the game. When you participate in rugby, you're not just a member of your local team, but part of a global brotherhood. Once you start playing rugby, you, part, you become part of the family, the rugby family. If you, if you go around the world and tell them you play rugby with another rugby player, They'll, they'll just be part of the family. They'll just treat you with respect. Because of the brutal nature of the sport, very little protective padding, a no holding back attitude, and basically no common sense, injuries in rugby go hand in hand, as evidenced by tonight's collection of wounded competitors. There were bruised bodies, twisted knees, sprained ankles, and even a little loss of blood. But part of belonging to the worldwide rugby family is beating up on each other for a little over an hour, then putting it behind you with a look in the eye, a shake of the hand, and a pat on the back. 
On this night, the pack of brothers from Elsie Allen were all consuming, and the scoreboard reflected their effort with a 30 to 5 final tally. But 10 or even 20 years down the road, it's not the score these young men will remember. I go back to Coach Clark, my rugby coach at Berkeley. Um, I can remember the, the talks he gave about life more than I remember the rugby things. You know, rugby or any sport is an opportunity to teach life. If, it, if we don't fulfill that, then there is no value to having a sport. And all it is is simply meaninglessly running around in circles. But if you have a program, whether it's basketball or baseball or cross country, where you're using athletics as an opportunity to teach life, then you have a very worthwhile program and a very worthwhile endeavor.